So this is the Atlanta Internet Video Marketing Association's One Day Workshop, and today we're going to talk about um, setting up your own green screen studio. Uh, I have a green screen studio in my home, and uh, a lot of people are interested in doing green screen video, and Gustav Wild of, of Cogito creative is going to speak to us and show how to do that and have some questions but first we want to acknowledge our sponsors uh, Robbie and Michelle of Van Gogh Video Studios here in Atlanta um, are letting us use the studio and the studio is available for renting and it's also available for live webcasting and we are getting live webcast today by uh, Performance PC and Tony Hale he does on location uh, or remote live webcasting and he also sell systems to be able to do live webcasting. Uh, Sony and Showcase Video, Showcase Photo and Video are also sponsoring today. We want to thank them and CopyTalk, which is copytalk.com. If anybody wants to go to them, they're a video transcription service. So we're going to thank our sponsors and get right to it. Gus is an amazing videographer uh, and editor, and his uh, all the guys that work with him do a great job as well. So Gus? So green screen. Green screen is super versatile. I mean, you can literally broadcast from anywhere in the world, even on the moon, if you want to put it as your background. So the cool thing about green screen nowadays is that programs are becoming a lot more affordable and accessible to uh, do some of your own chroma keying, which is what we call in the industry green screen chroma key. Essentially, green screen chroma keying means that you pick one specific color to take out and becomes transparent. So when you're in editing, when you lay it on the top layer, maybe if it's just one person standing in front of a green screen, that layer is going to look like just a person standing in nothing. So whatever's beyond, below that layer, that's going to be your background. So um, the two most popular colors for chroma keying are green for green screen, but also blue. And the reason for that is that there's no green or blue pigment in any human skin, no matter what ethnicity. So um, you can use any other colors, but then you're running into danger of like if you use yellow per se there would probably be some holes in my skin um, and that would just look really weird so the most important thing about a green screen is lighting you have to have proper lighting to make the green nice and smooth you want it one color so when you pick that color you don't have to do multiple chroma keys you can just pick one spot on there and that whole background is going to disappear it's super your editors are going to thank you um, and you'll get the final product a lot sooner so um, if you have bad lighting, sometimes it can almost be impossible and you have to take it into a different program, maybe After Effects, to really tone in to what you want out of there. And obviously, try to avoid having your talent wear any green or blue, depending on the screen, or they're going to have a giant hole in their body as well. So that would be it. Blue eyes, yeah, that's another thing. That's why green is more popular than blue, because you will have very, it's kind of freaky looking, and your eyes are like hollow if you, if you have blue eyes on a blue screen. But, um, so that is a good point to worry about. Um, also, anything reflective on, so maybe a watch or glasses, they might reflect the green or blue background. So then they're, they're gonna have holes in their face, which is not natural at all. So, um, the typically we use a five light um, setup for a green screen, the main ones being a backlight, and that's right here. We use our Pro, Pro Light, Lowell, great brand. Um, this is more, the backlight's more of a spotlight, and it, and it really does, it's most essential because it, it separates the subject from the background. So if you don't have that and all the light's just blasting from the front of the subject, you're going to have, it's just going to be too dark around the shoulders and the hair. So a lot of people call this a hair light. Um, but basically you'll see a nice like separation, a little glow on your shoulder or in your hair. So it really helps separate it. And then in, in post-production, it really helps bring the subject out. So the keying is a lot easier with What's the backlight. What's the light you said? Um, this is a pro light. Lowell is the brand. Um, L-O-W-E-L. So... That's our favorite lighting company. Um, everyone has their own, but uh, it's really good too because it's so small. You don't really want your backlight to spray everywhere. If, the more you can focus it, and you want it really diffused too because a lot of people make a mistake of not diffusing it enough and then it's just like a white halo <laughs> around their head. 
And while they might look very angelic, I don't know if that's the look you're going for. Let me go ahead and talk about the different surfaces you can use. Um, obviously, the best surface to have is a painted wall. Um, some even have psych walls where the slope gen gently slopes down to the floor. So when you're shooting from far away, there's no seam. And it almost looks like they're in an abyss. And you can put them, like sometimes when there's a crease in the floor or something, and if you want to show their feet, um, it's a little hard to key out that, that corner. So if you have a psych wall, which gives a nice, smooth, rounded edge, you can, it looks like they're just floating in the screen. You can put them, like I said, on the moon anywhere. So um, that's really important. So we use um, paper a lot. This is, uh, you can get this at any um, uh, expendable store that's for videographers. We, we got this at PC&E. Um, costs about 50 bucks. And uh, I mean, it lasts a while. If you're really careful with it, you can just roll it back up and you don't have to cut it every time. You might have to cut the bottom a little bit. It gets a little ratty. But um, it's very portable. Fits in my Honda. So that's important. <laughs> Barely. But um, we use the 9 feet. They make a 12 foot as well. Maybe if you have multiple people, you might want to get a little wider. But um, And it also works well as if you want to get head to toe, you can gently slope the paper out maybe put it out to here and tape it down. Make sure people don't step on it until they absolutely need to have it. Like, because even footprints, dirty shoes, can be a little hard to key out. So you want everything like as pristine and green as possible to uh, avoid any complication in post-production. Um, but also, some other things besides painting a wall and our uh, smooth, shiny paper there, is you can do cloth. Um, a lot of people start out with cloth. It's, it's even more portable. You can fold it, but the key is, the hard part is keeping it nice and smooth. Um, you can iron it. There's different types of cloth you can get, the non-wrinkle cloth. Um, but I just prefer just to go paper, um, especially if I'm on the road and if I don't have a painted wall. Um, it's just less to worry about. So I'm all about reducing stress because, you know, if you have a big shoot, it's stressful enough. So <laughs> um, but also, um, there's foam backgrounds you can use. Then they also make green, un like little, I don't know what these are even called, but they pop out. So you can have like just someone like holding it or something. So that's, that's a great one for on the go, especially maybe if you do, uh, if you have like maybe a web, web video blog or something that you just want, you just more content based, that you can really crank those out pretty fast. Um, also there's, there's one if you have a really big budget, um, you can buy what's called Pro Key, and it's very, um, it looks like a gray, gray cloth, but it actually has a little reflective, it's a very ultra reflective surface, and you put a green LED light around your lens, and it blasts that light, and you can't even see it on any of the subject or anything, but it reflects that green LED light in instant green screen, and that's, that's really like the best way to do it in my opinion, but um, you definitely need a bigger budget for that, and then you need the software too. Um, deal with that too because it does show green in the camera but then you run it to a box a computer and um, you can choose your background on the spot it's really cool um, your client can see it on the spot which is nice um, so if you do use cloth I recommend putting some weights on the bottom that'll help stretch it down um, minimize the wrinkles um, so when you light a green screen you're gonna want to light the screen first so we usually have two or three lights. Right now we have three, just to make it perfect. But um, we'll go ahead and turn these, these two lights on. And I'll try to show you exactly how, how even. You want the lighting to be even. Because even if you have a gradient um, where it looks like it might be a little bright green and it fades to dark green, you might not notice it that much when you're filming. But when you go into post-production and you're trying to get that perfect chroma key that perfect sweet spot, it's going to be a little more difficult, so you might have to put a couple of filters on there, different layers, um, to get that perfectly. And so we use, um, these are Omni lights, they're a lot bigger than the Pro lights, they're a little more voltage. Here's an example of an Omni, just got barn doors, um, pretty standard, but this is what we use the most. Uh, and then uh, this is a total light, which they're pretty comparable, but uh, we use this. So once you get a nice even light on the background, 
then you light your subject. So you worry about background first. Like, don't even worry about your subject at all. And so you want your key and fill, and then your backlight. So these are all for your subject. These That's are only for your, for your screen. You have to keep them inside the green spot. Um, so that's important to remember. It's best if you just sit there and talk to the camera, um, honestly. But um, unless you have a big psych wall where you're having an action sequence, like in a Hollywood film, um, you want to minimize movement. And also hair, blonde hair especially, um, or like thinner hair. The green really shows through. And that's why the backlight is important to minimize that. But um, the more they, like especially with women, the more you can have their hair back maybe or down, like just um, closer to them so it's not so um, feathery, I guess I would call it. it. Makes it a little more difficult. It's not impossible though, by any means. And also you can even put a, a minus green gel over where our, we have our, diff our uh, diffuser on the backlight right now. But they make magenta gels so it takes out green. So maybe if you put one of the magenta gels on there, it'll kind of counteract, because it's opposite the color wheel, it'll counteract some of the spillage that you might see in your shot. So um, that's a nice little trick. Uh, we don't do that too often, though, just because I'm worried that it might give a little too much magenta. But um, it's definitely a great technique to use if you are having that problem. Let's go back to the lighting. You want your background to be about one stop darker than the subject. You want to light the subject just a hair brighter. You don't want to overexpose, obviously, but you want them to pop out from the background. It'll help you in post-production. When you are keying out that green, it'll help avoid keying out anything on, on your subject. Um, also, diffusion. Diffusion's huge. I mentioned it a little bit. But you want a very soft light. And um, a lot of times, people doing green screen will use soft boxes. And those are really great, especially like in the studio when you don't have to take them up and break them down all the time. Um, this is our portable rig, so these lights we are used to taking them down and breaking, um, breaking them apart. But um, so we compensate, instead of having a soft box, we bring this giant diffuser and we use that umbrella and we bounce that off. So this is our key light, which is shining directly on, although it is diffused. And this is our fill light, which just kind of just fills the other side of the face gives one side of the face a little more dynamic lighting, so it's not just flat and boring. So these are flags. They're really handy if, say, your, maybe your key light is a little too hot on part of the screen, but you do want it for the subject, but it's, it's hitting the screen a little too much. You can get a C stand, which are what's holding up our background, and you can just put up a flag so it still hits the per your subject, but it will block any unnecessary spillage onto the, uh, onto the background. So you can use poster board, anything opaque. But uh, that's real important because, like I said, you want the background to be as even as possible. Um, also house lights. Usually you want to turn off, except for these. These are actually all the lights on the rack. That's an ideal for a green screen. You don't, I mean, you don't even have to mess with light stands and everything if you have a permanent setup. But uh, say you're in someone's office or something and you're filming a green screen, or your own office for yourself, um, turn off the fluorescent lights for sure. Um, those usually have some really funky uh, interference with the video. You'll see bars just of light just slowly going up the screen. Very disorienting. Um, but then use lights. And if you can't, um, if you don't have any professional lights, um, any other professional videographers are going to wince when I bring these out, but <laughs> these are super handy. Like, I'm, not, I'm not above uh, using these on a, um, a real run and gun shoot, and I've used these before, obviously. As long as all your lights are the same, then you set your camera to white balance for that light. So you just don't really want to mix like the full white outdoor light or like these uh, full, full spectrum bulbs with incandescent bulbs or halogen. Because then indoor, indoor light is usually a little orange and outdoor light's blue. So if you mix the two, you set your white balance for one, the other one's going to seem really orange or really blue. So as long as you keep them consistent and you set your camera to that, you should be fine. So yeah, so you'll want to turn off your house lights and just use your studio lights, even if those are your studio lights. That's what you want to do. So when you position your actor, you don't want them to be too close to the screen 
or you'll get some really awesome shadows that will really annoy you in post. So you want to be maybe eight to ten feet out if you can if you can help it. Um, so let's set this camera up. This beautiful Sony camera. And we'll get Brant in frame. And so now when you see on the monitor, you can see that there is some some non-green on the side, and that's totally fine. Because, as I mentioned earlier, you're just making a top layer. So even if you crop your top layer into here, as long as Brant's arm doesn't go outside um, this screen, you can crop it in <laughs> that tight, and then chroma key the screen, and you're, and you're golden. So all you need to do is make sure he stays within these boundaries, or, or he's going to have a missing hand right here. <laughs> so, because you'll need to crop it in to at least here. I would probably crop it in about here because, you know, we could tape this down flat to give it a little more even lighting. But um, for the sake of time, I would just crop it into here since Brant's going to be sitting. He's not going to be moving around is that too a much. Problem with that right side, which, which is the this would be a problem. I mean, this this is not a fatal problem because you'd you, you'd probably have to do. I would probably just do two quick chroma keys: one for this green, and one for this green because it looks like. There's a couple spots with it. So this would probably take maybe two keys. Or you could do one and just broaden your selection. So you could just say light green and dark green on one. And, but then you get everything in between, which on this would be fine, because I don't see anything else between them. But say if, if there was some kind of green in between these, but you didn't want to key out, which would be rare. I don't know why. But you would want to do two specific ones to get that green and that green. Um, so as you can see, that backlight's giving a nice little separation, so Brant doesn't just blend into the background, and um, and he's not causing any shadows on the background, which is important. Um, <coughs> let's see. A monitor is pretty is is very important. So if, to have a monitor on stage, because it's really hard to see in your camera's internal screen. Most of them are like three or four inches, so. Uh, you won't see some spillage on the cheek, maybe, like you would be able to see here. You'd be able to see some green on his cheek that might be reflecting. Um, also, if you use paper, like we do, it's really important to not use anything shiny paper or anything glossy that might reflect anything. So this paper is very, it's a very matte finish. It's almost like construction paper. You can come up and feel it afterwards. So it's really good about diffusing the light when it reflects it off. So um, you don't want to... Uh, outline your, act, your subject. Yeah, I mean, I can't stress enough how important white balancing is, um, even just for your subject, too. So before you go, you want to show your camera what's white before you start rolling. So then that, that dictates what's blue, what's yellow. So uh, that's important, especially for green screen, because you need to tell the camera what's green. But all right. And as far as uh, post-production, um, we like to use After Effects and um, Premiere for our chroma keys. Um, Final Cut, we were, we were really big on Final Cut. And when Final Cut 10 came out, a lot of the community was frustrated with their editing abilities. But one thing I was really impressed with the new Final Cut is their chroma keying and their color correction software. So sometimes we do use that um, Final Cut 10 for uh, chroma keying. It's, uh, it's very intuitive, too. So maybe if you don't do this a lot, and maybe you want to take um, uh, maybe some, some videos for your business to another level, or um, like a podcast or something, put a green screen in your house. You can paint a wall or just bring some paper down there, or a blanket, especially if it's just going to be permanent. Just the, any sheet that's not going to get wrinkled. So you can just keep it up, keep it weighted down. Um, and you know, get a program like Final Cut or um, Premiere. And um, those are great entry-level ways to easily do a great chroma key by yourself in just a matter of an hour or two. So um, when you're shooting yourself, there's no pressure <laughs> to get it right. You don't have to impress a director. You just have to make sure that you're happy with your own work. Gus, when you're setting it up in your home, and we mm -hmm. did this in my studio when we first started, 
we had way too much um, wattage and mm -hmm. all of that. Talk a little bit about, I mean, how do you, I mean, this is a studio, so it's all set for it, but mm -hmm. is there anything different you need to do at home or anything when you set up this much lighting? There definitely is, um, especially if you're using lights like this. If you're using these guys, you still need to be a little wary of it, but um, I've blown many of uh, circuits in my day, so I've learned the hard way. <laughs> but so now we just have a general rule of thumb. Um, one, one, of the, one of these lights, especially per circuit. So um, I do some uh, editing work, very, very little, but I use iMovie mm -hmm. for uh, Mac, and uh, uh, it has it has the uh, chroma key thing in it. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything um, good or bad about doing that? I mean, I, 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 mean, I tried one with poor lighting, and I saw exactly how it didn't work. So, yeah. <laughs> so I know it's, that's why I wanted to learn about this. But uh, it does do it, I guess. Mm -hmm. So is it? Uh, yeah, I mean. It? Actually, I've been really blown away with iMovie. I mean, it's free. It comes with every um, Apple product. Um, but, uh, you know, there's pros and cons to it. And I think for free, and especially if you're just you're doing maybe a, a web, web blog series or something, or uh, maybe some internal videos for your business, or maybe just a little general promo, something like to update people with, uh, I think iMovie is great, honestly. I mean, it's... Uh, like I said in the very beginning, technology, these, these softwares are just getting so much easier to use and something that once took like a professional with like, you know, very specialized skills to do. Now business owners that aren't even into videography are making their own green screen videos and, you know, they're perfect because you can brand it, you can put your logo behind you, you know, now it's really popular to do just one solid color behind you. Apple made the white super famous in their commercials. So it's almost like an abyss, like you're just in this, this element, <laughs> I don't know really what to say. And, but, I mean, you can put your logo in there, you can put your logo behind you. I mean, it's very impressive, I mean, and for people don't realize how, how easy it is once you understand the lighting and, you know, just a few things that can totally ruin it so people think it's really hard. But if you just know these few things, I mean, you can do it no problem. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So what would the whole setup for a good quality green screening operation run? What would one expect to pay? I've we'll seen see. kits as low as 250 but you get yeah. what you pay for. Yeah, this will be totally off the top of my head, spur of the moment, but... Um, I would say be prepared to spend about $800. Um, and this includes... Well, everything but the camera, pretty much. So, I mean, C stands are pretty necessary, um, unless you have a background stand. Um, you can use, you can get creative and find some other way to hang up your paper. But, I mean, these are portable. We take them everywhere. They're super rugged, strong. Um, that's quality. Um, I do believe in maybe spending an extra couple hundred dollars on a light kit. Um, I did buy, a, um, my first light kit ever, I think, was about $300 for a three-piece. And um, I mean, it lasted me a couple years, but uh, near the end, they started shorting out, and um, I just felt like they were very temporary. Even though they they did the job great, they were soft boxes. They gave me really nice, even light, but um, I could tell like maybe the, like on one of them, the switch became like a little loose. So I would probably spend maybe five hundred dollars on lights, maybe. Uh, but but like I said, I mean, these these are what like I think. 20, 20 or thirty dollars at Home Depot. So um, and it, and it'll give you as long as you just take the time to light the screen first, and then light your subject, and then remove any spillage from the subject lights onto the screen. Like this spillage isn't bad because it's not really highlighting some. But some lights, maybe this yellow guy down here, has the bulb's a little weird. So you'll see like bright spots on the paper and then darker spots. So it will be a little more difficult to key. So, I mean, the more you spend, the easier it's going to be for you. <laughs> so it just depends on how much you value, like, ease of, ease of use or how much you, you, f you, you might be on a budget. So you might spend a few more minutes in post-production. So it's kind of a give and take. But um, Thank you. yeah, no problem. I would say for, for a super quality green screen setup, you can get one for a grand. Um, that's, that's really top of the line. Any other questions? Where am I at? Website or anything, just if people want to 
plug? Yeah, sure. Oh, actually, I do want to plug one thing, too. We are um, starting a series of, um, uh, I guess, videographer workshops online. So um, our website's gokagito.com. That's G-O-C-O-G-I-T-O. -O -O. Almost rhymes. G-O-C-O-G-I-T-O. <laughs> -O -O. <laughs> Gokagito, that's our name. Um, we're Kagito Creative. Um, so our series of these, these videos we want to give out for free, it's called Incogito. And our first one we're about to release is about exposure. So how to properly expose your camera. There's different ways to influence that. Maybe it's your ISO, your gain, or your shutter speed, or your aperture. There's a lot of different things you can change inside your camera to give you the best exposure. So we just want to really like build a community, especially in Atlanta. We want to um, get a discussion going about things, you know, talk about projects, help each other out, um, because we need help just as much as anyone sometimes. So um, that's our goal with that, and just kind of get our name out there. So um, maybe I'll, uh, once we do put up our first video, I'll send it to Donna, and maybe she can spread, spread the link around. But um, we'd love you guys to check it out, and um, yeah, just keep, keep an eye out for some more. <laughs> Thank you, Gus. Thank you.